My name is David Dodick. I'm a professor of neurology at Mayo Clinic in Arizona and president of the American Headache Society. There's been a lot in the news recently about the reporter who had a witnessed uh, live on-air event that occurred that uh, many were concerned at the time might have represented a stroke. Um, and as it turned out, um, according to the news, it uh, seemed to represent a migraine, complex migraine. Migraine, complex migraine is um, the official term for it is migraine with aura. And migraine with aura affects about 30% of those individuals who have migraine. The aura itself is, represents reversible neurological symptoms that usually evolve over the course of five minutes and almost always uh, disappear within the course of about 60 minutes. So it comes on over five minutes and it's gone within an hour. And it's usually accompanied by or followed by a severe migraine headache. The aura itself may include symptoms that are visual, such as sparks in the eyes or uh, zigzag lines or prism-like visual illusion um, or blind spots in the vision uh, that generally precede the headache. Or it can be sensory symptoms, such as tingling, numbness that involves the face, the hand, or one side of the body, uh, and language symptoms, like the one experienced by the reporter uh, that we that we witnessed and it's usually a difficulty with expressive language so in other words the aphasia is an expressive aphasia where the individual has difficulty forming words or articulating what it is they want to say now the concern here of course was that she was having a stroke and migraine with aura can of course very closely mimic and resemble the symptoms of a stroke so it's very difficult for patients to tell the difference in fact, it's very difficult sometimes for physicians to tell the difference. And oftentimes these patients, particularly when it's the first episode, like it apparently was in this case, uh, need to be evaluated completely, thoroughly, and comprehensively for, for a stroke, uh, which apparently was indeed the case here. Um, triggers for aura um, are typically like triggers for non-aura-related migraine attacks. And they may include dietary uh, triggers, uh, menstrual cycle, sometimes changes in weather, um, sometimes uh, stress, emotional stress. With migraine with aura, sometimes it can be, the triggers may be visual, in fact, so a flickering light or Venetian blinds or some other repetitive complex visual stimulus uh, could trigger the attack. Um, but generally speaking, the, the attacks tend to be triggered by the same stimuli that trigger non-aura-related migraine. Sometimes, however, they just occur spontaneously. And sometimes patients wake up from sleep with their aura symptoms. So in general, individuals can't really put their finger on what exactly triggered the aura. It's extremely rare for patients who have migraine with aura to have a stroke during the aura. In fact, in over 20 years, I can only think of two cases that I've seen amongst thousands and thousands of cases. So that's extremely rare. However, we know that migraine sufferers who have aura are at a slightly increased risk of stroke. And when I say slightly increased, we're talking somewhere on the order of 10 to 20 per 100,000. So while the risk is increased, the absolute risk is still very small. It's important to note, though, that if you do have migraine with aura, we know that certain risk factors amplify or increase that risk of stroke even further, such as taking an oral contraceptive pill, smoking, or having other vascular risk factors such as high blood pressure or high cholesterol. But in particular, women who have migraine with aura are generally encouraged not to take an oral contraceptive pill and certainly not to be smoking because that amplifies the risk of stroke even more. In general, um, if someone has infrequent migraine attacks with aura, and in general infrequent migraine attacks, then there is no treatment generally rendered for that in terms of prevention. However, most people who have migraine with aura, in fact about 80-85%, also have migraine attacks without aura. And if they occur frequently, and by that usually we use a, a number of one, once per week or more, then generally prevention in the, in the form of a, a tablet uh, or a medication is generally started to try to reduce the frequency uh, of these attacks. Migraine attacks with aura can be treated with the same medications that we use to treat migraine attacks without aura, 
with the exception that some physicians tend not to use migraine-specific medication when the aura is complex, so to speak, as it was in this particular case. So when it involves language or when it involves sensation along the body or certainly when it involves weakness, then we generally don't use migraine-specific medications like triptans and dihydroergotamine and other ergot derivatives. In general, women are three times more likely to develop migraine with or without aura compared to men. In general, the po lifetime prevalence uh, of migraine with or without aura is approximately 30%. So over the course of a woman's lifetime, there's about a 30% chance that at some point they will experience a migraine attack uh, with or without aura. Generally speaking, it tends to involve men and women, usually from the time of puberty up to the age of about 45. Um, and then there's a fall off in the frequency of migraine after that. Nevertheless, there are still uh, men and women in their 60s, 70s, and 80s who, who continue to experience migraine. But in general, it's more common to occur in women and more common to occur between the ages of about 15 to 45. For more information uh, on migraine, I would uh, uh, encourage you to go to the Mayo Clinic website, mayoclinic.org, uh, and the American Headache Society website, www.americanheadachesociety.org.